folks, it's Thursday night. Welcome aboard uh, Murder Hobo Inc.'s Cacophony Edition. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if this is your first time here, hang on for the ride of your life. If you've come back for more, you are indeed a glutton for punishment, and we are grateful. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about me and d join our Discord channel. If you want to buy cool stuff like a duvet cover, shower curtain, phone case, T-shirt, whatever. Hit our RPG swag shop. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be on the show, like on a one-shot this Saturday, which is full with four brand new hobos, uh, you can always try again next time. Or you can be on the talk show on Tuesdays, M Hobo Inc., Twitter, Gmail. Hit us up. Uh, we'll get you on again this Saturday uh, for first time hobos. So it should be a fun game. Uh, also, if you're looking for some dice, some cool customized dice, uh, try Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, tell them what you want, see if they can help you out. And of course, if your game stinks, I, I am unfamiliar with that because none of our games stink except for maybe Kyle's. Uh, Kyle's games are atrocious. I mean, they're horrible. They're bad. Our games, my games, they're great. But if my games did stink, I would get some Adventure Sense by Oddfish Games. They could smell all pirate shippy. Yeah. Uh, they also do the shine system. So if you want to write much more better than me, go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> go ahead and you make sure uh, the dog doesn't eat the cat. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Caitlin. We'll, we'll come around to you. Uh, uh, Oddfish Games. Yeah, they've got the shine system that goes ahead and helps you write. They also have how to RPG with your cat Kickstarter coming out soon. We will give you the details on that as soon as we have them. Uh, last time we started with David. We'll start with Carrie this time. Uh, normally behind the camera tonight in front and behind the camera. Carrie, tell us about you and your character. <sighs> and I always have to ask, are you unmuted? Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got it. Okay, go ahead and say it again then. <laughs> Way to go, Rob. Uh, you're the first of many, many people, actually. We get a lot of views overnight, so you guys must just be holding out for, I, I don't know. I don't know, know some watch. other show. But that's okay. I, I, you can watch us anytime you want, or you can listen to us on our audio-only podcast, tinyurl.com, mhobo, Inc. Audio. Uh, that way you miss out on this, uh, and that's your loss, not mine. Next up is David. David, who are you? Who are you playing? Uh, hi, I'm David, and I play Zadar. He is a changeling, our arcane trickster, who has a spell book now and is dabbled in a little bit of wizardry. So, yeah, yeah. You, you you said you were feeding the dog, so it wouldn't eat the. She's cat. feeding Caitlin, is um, what she's doing. I left the dog food out, and then because that's the side that go upstairs, and the cat has a habit of eating all the dog food. So I don't know if Cassetti or the cat eat, but I'm starting to realize it's all of eating it and all of starting to get a little chunky. So <laughs> uh Caitlin, you're just in time. Who are you? Who are you playing? I am uh, I forgot today was Thursday. <laughs> so it's so chaotic. Um, I'm Caitlin. I have a ton of pets, so my life's a little crazy right now between two birds, a dog, a cat, and a fish. And then I gotta feed myself in between. So we got strawberries and water today to dinner and some brownies. So it's like chocolate covered strawberries, but it's all vegan. Uh, <laughs> I play Daphne, the tiefling paladin, and her life is seeming a lot more easier than mine these days. We shall see. Folks, right. last time, uh, <laughs> these guys finished their home inspection for the cloud giants on uh, a cloud mansion. 
Unfortunately, they found an alternative map uh, and their pilot, uh, damn it, what's pilot Aerosmith. Smith? Aerosmith uh, uh, disagreed with the directions. Uh, they are en route to the Grand Academy to see their old friend Mortimer J. Smith, who is no longer on sabbatical. They have a rare, uh, what you would call it, artifact that they need to identify and destroy if they can. Unfortunately, they found a secondary map and they opted to go with it. They did not head towards the Grand Academy. They instead land on Freckland, a uh, large, not quite Australia size island, but a big island in the North Sea. It's a little bit chilly uh seasonal average is going to be down near freezing these guys uh suffered some mechanical issues with their balloon owned by aerosmith and had to put down in a small clearing aerosmith is trying his best to go ahead and get his contraption to work uh when some winter wolves showed up and had to be dealt with the last thing we knew was uh, these guys were successfully defeating the Winter Wolves on their way to find Oric the Stinky, uh, a friend or associate, potential lover of them. Uh, but the fight with the wolves uh, garnered some attention by a spindly old woman who stood in the tree line watching. We rejoin these guys as you wipe the blood off your blades uh, you have successfully skinned the winter wolf. Uh, what do you guys want to do now? Not all at once. Yeah, so I guess, um, yeah, kind of <clears throat> check out this figure that's standing within the trees. <laughs> Are you go? Are you, are you going to hail her or go over and see her? Um, I guess we'll hail her. Hi. Sorry about the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> She's backing us? Okay. So, uh, Do you want Aerosmith to remain behind or go with you? Uh, what does Aerosmith want to do? Uh, after watching you guys deal with wolves, he has no intention of being out here solo in the frontier. Right. He will follow you. Okay. Uh, you guys also notice it's a bit chillier uh, than it has been for you guys in quite some time. Since none of you are northerners, uh, it's really kind of uncomfortable except for yeah, except for Camille, who has the winter wolf pelt. Uh, <laughs> as you guys, as you guys move over, Aerosmith quips, "God, she must be like three hundred years old." <laughs> she she smiles, uh, not as many teeth as she should have, but smiles. <laughs> well done, well done. You handled yourselves well. Why, yes, you are at, at my homeland. You are in Freckland. St Oric the Stinky? Oric the Stinky. Oric the Stinky. What an unusual name. I have not heard of him. Who might he be? Uh, a young barbarian warrior. <laughs> Plenty of barbarians are in this land, my friend. <laughs> Would you like an apple? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, perhaps, perhaps later. Uh, before we crashed, apple. I put it in my pocket. You are not going to eat it, dear. Oh, it's my snack in case I get hungry later. It looks delicious. Uh, a loud growl is heard from behind you as you all turn. Uh, you notice Aerosmith. Sorry. Hey, uh, exactly how old are you? Oh. My, <laughs> <laughs> what an unusual question uh, for such a short individual. 
I am many moons old is uh, my answer, but not so many moons that I do not know somebody who needs something to eat. And she hands Aerosmith an apple. Who wants to D12 against me? I would. Oh, like Camille do it. <laughs> Camille, if you win, you get to choose whether he eats it or not. Six. He says, don't mind if I do. Crunch. Have you ever had the spice cinnamon? That's kind of what it tastes like. Oh, cinnamon. He takes, a, he takes another bite out of it. Uh, she looks at uh, one through four. Three. Uh, Caitlin, what's your character's name again? Oh my God, Daphne. I didn't know that myself. Uh, she looks at Daphne and says, <laughs> you look like you're getting cold. Do you want to share my fire with me? Yeah, I'll share the fire with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to snuggle uh, real close to her. Uh, the small old woman moves okay, uh, moves a lot faster than you would expect, but she is in no particular hurry. Uh, at infrequent intervals, small birds drop down upon her shoulder and go for a lift. Uh, they alternate between red birds and blue birds uh, that chirp noticeably to her. Yes, yes, I know, strangers. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> she carries on a complete conversation with these birds who every once in a while kind of look at you. Uh, let's see, they'll look at Camille. Eh, don't much care for Camille. They look at Zadar. Like Zadar even less. Oh, no. <laughs> Daphne, they like you as much as they like Camille. Uh, so you guys are not big in the avian world at this point in time. Oh. Uh, every once in a while, the woman will turn around, make sure that you're with her. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, you can see that there's a little bit of snow or frost on the landscape here. And footprints are clearly evident that seem to match with her boots, which as you look down, you notice that they are Quite well crafted, uh, but they leather with feathers sticking out of it. So it's almost like hmm. she has down boots. Uh, oh. A short time or short time, short distance later, uh, you arrive at what could be best be described as a teepee uh, with a small tendril of smoke wafting out of the top. Come, come. Uh, you notice this, but you also notice that the covering of said teepee uh, meshes well with the surroundings. It's not quite camouflaged, mm -hmm. but it is not something readily, readily noticeable. It's not painted hunter orange. Uh, as she lifts the tarp entrance, come, come, hurry, hurry. Um, sure, follow in. <laughs> Zadar is first, who's second? And Daphne is third. Everybody roll straight up D20. Uh, 14. Mm, four. Uh, Daphne is completely unimpressed. <laughs> Zadar and Camille, you are only mildly impressed. As one might surmise, this old woman has a magical teepee. Inside, you are in a hunting lodge uh only the heads on the wall appear to be animated and happy to see the elderly woman uh, moose deer elk jackalope uh a a giant beaver fresh <laughs> Freshly stuffed. We're at uh, Universal. <laughs> she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a handful of seed and reaches out and feeds a mule head. Uh, the mule head 
gulps up the seed quite unexpectedly and you all hear a big slurp as the mule's tongue wafts over her. Uh, she pats the mule head on there and says, thank you, Smokey, you have done a marvelous job. Sit, sit, my friends, sit. Uh, there are what best can best be described as pine structured couches. Uh, okay. So, yes, but they're glazed. So it looks like uh, somebody went to Ikea. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but there is a stone fireplace uh, that goes up to the tarp ceiling. Uh, the ceiling itself does kind of resemble the teepee's exterior structure. Everything else in here, including the rugs on the floor, uh, do not give the sense that this is normal. You guys all recognize it to be magical. As a matter of fact, uh, when Hempta the Seductive was rescued out of the Bay of Cacophony, you were in a similar uh, mansion, a magical mansion. So uh, whoever this old bat is, she has the same ability. Uh, she whistles twice at different octaves and everybody roll perception. Uh, let's see, uh, 13. Daphne, hey. wow, you guys suck. I'm going to be in <laughs> combat with you guys right now. Uh, quick as a bunny, a large bunny uh, that is bipedal walks up carrying a copper tray uh, with ceramic accoutrements on it. Uh, they appear to be bowls, almost like you'd find in a Japanese tea house. Okay. Uh, whatever the central ceramic pot is, it must be very hot because you can all see steam rising out of it. Uh, she calls the individual Jasper and hands each one of you the small bowl. She then consumes the contents and just, mm, mm, mm. delicious. I'm going to go ahead and trust her. I'll try it. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. that's why. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's going to drink it. Mm -hmm. Everybody who drinks, D20. It agrees with Aerosmith. Uh, it is uh, 17. Zadar likes it. Camille does not. It is not. We're a long way from cop, cop, ugh, flying J. <laughs> Daphne, are you going to I feel like drink? there should be one if we're like up in the clouds just because of the name. You aren't in the clouds anymore. Uh -uh. You're on the ground. Yeah. Uh, did you want a drink? Uh, I feel like I'm just going to smell it, not necessarily drink it. Okay. It is uh, heavily spiced. Uh, Aerosmith, oh, I definitely don't want it then. Yeah, Aerosmith, not one for pleasantries, points out that eh, I don't like how it tastes with the apple. Eh, I should have warned you about that, honey. Now, uh, are you individuals lost, I take it? Um, yes, a little. <laughs> we ended up someplace that we didn't think we'd end up at. Well, tell me about that contraption you were screwing around with in the clearing. I defer to Aerosmith. <laughs> Aerosmith then goes on a long... Uh, I knew he would. <laughs> uh, God. Uh, diatribe explanation. Uh, diatribe, but it's uh, Cliff Clavin explanation from Cheers. Uh, for those of you who are young, it is a very long, boring, and intense with questionable details, kind of like what Republicans do on a daily basis. Uh, <laughs> and he describes what the mechanical item is. Uh, she sits quite intently and very politely. And once he gets done, she goes, you could have just said a hot air balloon. <laughs> uh, let's see how he takes that. Well, I'm impressed that she knows what one is. So. As, as is Aerosmith. He's like, well, you are a woman of uh, great surprises. And she folds over her skirt and says, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was showing. <laughs> uh, so where are you trying to get to? Uh, 
the Grand Academy actually is our original destination, but um, I, I'm infor- unfortunately, the, the name of the tribe that we were looking for, Bar- Barbarians, escapes me at the moment. So oh, I ask, wait. are you native of Freckland? Do I not look native? No, you, you, you knew what a hot air balloon was. That's quite impressive. I am what they call in my culture an artificer. Oh, okay. Wow. I tend to tinker a great deal, as gnomes also do. Uh, mm, cheers to you. He drinks it again. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Still does not agree with them. Um, so you're trying to get to the Grand Academy. Well, that was not, our original destination. I have not been there in many years. Nope, I have not. Hmm. I was a very young child when I was shipped off to the Grand Academy. That has been many many moons ago. Uh, so you want to find Stinky? Is that who you want to find? Yes. Uh, outside, you hear a howl, a very deeply throated howl, like something very large and dangerous. She does not flinch one iota. So ah, I... I may be able to help you. Okay. Well, thank uh, you. Who knew this stinky person the best? That would be Camille. I will need your assistance, my dear. She reaches over and gives you a gentle pat on the chin like a grandmother would and, <laughs> and reaches smack. up and <laughs> rips out a big hunk of your hair. This is exactly what I need. She fishes around through the folds of her robe, pulls out a slight, small copper dish, puts it in there. Uh, Fire springs from her fingertips and ignites the hair. Uh, Plumes plumes and tendrils uh, waft up. Have you been intimate with this individual? (laughs) <laughs> that would explain that hmm. uh, Auric is present in Frequan I cannot perhaps if you had been intimate with him there would have been more details <laughs> well, uh, intimate details yep Well, anytime you eat his meat, that's close quite to literally. <laughs> yeah. uh, one moment. Um, where did I? Where did I put that? Where did I put that? Where did I put that? Uh, and a squirrel appears, uh, and she gibbers off something uh, in squirrel. Uh, the squirrel speeds away and says it, it's gonna it's gonna be one minute here uh, i i by the way am suki the witch you are i'm aerosmith i'm uh, i'm the pilot of the craft and uh you know i uh am trying to figure out how to fix that so if you can help me go ahead and fix that that would be awesome and i am sadar Oh, wait, uh, wait, seriously, wait. anything you can do to help me with my uh, craft it would be most generous. And you, Deary? Yeah. Me? Yep. Um, seriously, anything you can do to get that play, that uh, craft back up in the air, that would be awesome. I mean, if you like get rid of some of the bodies, I think you could lift it up. Uh, the squirrel returns with a scroll and she takes out this I don't know uh, map made out of some type of flesh Uh, you really can't identify it particularly 
but it looks like this. Uh, yes. She reaches oh, into pepper! the she reaches into the folds of her robe and pulls out a set of spectacles and puts them down at the end of her nose and looks and goes, okay, we are, uh, where did I travel? I traveled, first I went down and then I went up and then I, that's right, that's right. right? And the squirrel begins to chitter incessantly. Uh, I believe we are here at this clearing. Ah. So there's that. Now you say he is a barbarian. Correct. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid I only know three tribes here. Um, although there are several others I have heard. I am only familiar with three of them. Uh, let me see. Which ones do I know? Uh, there's some ignorant people that live here. They are called the Bagadi tribe. Uh, they do not like visitors at all. They not friendly. Not friendly. Uh, kind of rude individuals. Ah. Uh, my, of course, my tribe is right here, just across the Swipe River. Um, and the only other tribe I am aware of is somewhere in this region. And they are, um, uh, oh, there's a word you people use. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Cannibals. Oh, no. They uh, paint their face uh, green and yellow and uh, have an appetite for human flesh. They are no friends of our people, uh, but I do not know anyone named the Stinky uh, in there. The Abominable Snowman. <laughs> the, the White Death or something, yeah. I've heard, I've heard rumors of a white death, but that is on the Eastern Peninsula. That would be over in this region here. Um, I, I, I could take you back to uh, my people. Perhaps uh, one of the other elders has heard of this uh, Auric the Snooty. Uh, stinky. Thank you. Uh, we, we can go <laughs> there. I'm almost done with my rituals. Uh, so if you guys wanted to spend the night here in the comfort of my domicile, uh, I, I, I would enjoy the company as my vespers are almost done. Um, certainly. We, we Everybody roll say. perception check. As you guys are doing that, Aerosmith asked her if she's got uh, any more of them, uh, their apples. 17. <laughs> 19. All three of you clearly hear the flapping of extremely large leathery wings outside. Uh, you see uh, Suki the witch kind of cock her head. <sighs> He's back. <sighs> okay. Uh, I have a few things I need to do, and unfortunately, you are not allowed to come with me because they are uh, rituals of my religion, and it must be done uh, in solitary. But if you would like to wait here, I will be back in just a few hours. Anything that you touch that you aren't supposed to, we'll go ahead and let you know not to touch it. Uh, stay away from the green rug. It is temperamental. Duly Look, noted. <laughs> looking, looking quickly around, none of you see a green rug. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. This is uh, an open floor plan, but it's got maybe four to six separate areas. The area that you guys are in is centrally located and the tent flap goes right to it. Uh, then you have rooms at your noon, your two, 
your five, your seven, and your 10. Uh, but it is open. You can see in there, uh, there's an armoire, a four poster bed, which is way larger than she needs. I mean, it's way, all four of you, or all five of you could fit comfortably in it. Uh, uh, maybe she's a fan of werewolves. I don't know. Cool. Uh, there are two plush chairs there. Aerosmith will launch himself onto the bed, uh, dirty clothes and all. Uh, oh. and, and he will kind of bounce uh, and, re and remark how nice it is. Now, he's not putting his feet on the bed. So you're all dirty. <laughs> uh, as, uh, as, she, as she reaches the doorway, she asks if there's anything else that you need. Um, other than, um, I don't know, perhaps uh, an apple would be good. You hear her and she tells you, listen carefully, uh, and sure enough, the large rabbit returns. Uh, she says something. Uh, the rabbit nods, hops away on its bipedal feet. Uh, a moment later, it returns with four apples. Uh, she says, if you do that and you speak rabbit or can otherwise communicate with Jasper, Jasper can help you out. So to call Jasper, two whistles and Jasper will appear. Okay. Uh, as you guys wander around after she leaves, the heads follow you as you go. <laughs> Similar to some freakish Jesus painting. Uh, <laughs> the eyes never leave you. Uh, hour one. Shortly after she leaves, the feathery flapping wings are heard again. Anybody want to do anything about that? Probably not at this point. <laughs> Daphne, you want to do anything about that? Sorry, I got so distracted. My friend's like, my ducking drink is good. And I said, stop drinking ducks. And I just wanted to, nice. I'm like, we're not talking about ducks and DD. And I was like, I go check out the ducks. Nice. Uh, do you want to do anything about the flapping leathery wings? Um, coconut oil on them. You what? Uh -huh. And they need, they need, they need oil. They need to be moisturized. Just talking, they're outside. Oh, um, what's inside that I see? Heads on the wall. Uh, stay away from the carpet. <laughs> we hear le leathery wings outside flapping. There's no, oh, I have my apple. I throw my apple out the window. Uh, okay. Uh, can the Twitch stream not hear Camille now or was that just early on? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eight thirty-three. They can't hear her. Yeah. Well, is at you, first it was button? at eight twenty-seven, then eight thirty-three. <laughs> it's only been a half hour, so it's a sprint commercial. Here we go. Okay, that's why I tend to repeat a lot of shit. Okay. Uh, check the uh, audio. So the headset's unmuted. You're unmuted. And still, no. So every time we talk, I just talk over it and I'll think it's you. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
We can go. Camille says. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a voice that gives Camille, and I just wasn't like, I don't know, Camille. And I'm like, why is that coming to my head? Why? <laughs> I don't okay. know. Now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, I am oh. sitting by the fireplace taking a nap. Uh, so, Daphne, you throw out one of the apples outside. Yes. Okay. Uh, D12 against me. Nine. Oh, I'm definitely not going to beat that one. Just, but yeah, I got a five. Uh, also, the, I totally bugged out on the screen and it's showing the ten. <laughs> really weird. Do you uh, do you leave the flap open or let it fall shut? Flap of the tent. You're going to let it close? Daffy. Oh. I'm like, what flap? The wings? I'm really confused. Why are they open? <laughs> <laughs> I closed it. Back then. Okay. Uh, you do not hear what happens next. After an hour, uh, the bay of a coyote, a large coyote, a very huge coyote huge. is heard. Huge. Uh, <laughs> all the words, all any, the adjectives. Anybody want to go outside and take a look around mm. at that? No. Aerosmith is snoring loudly. I'm sure he is. <laughs> I offer my apple to one of the animals that are on the wall. Aww. Uh, they will graciously accept that and take a big bite out of it. Uh, and they will wait for a second bite until it is offered because they are polite creatures. Which I do. I give them. Okay. Uh, about a half hour after that, the tent flap goes open and snow drifts in. A very beleaguered old woman comes forward, claws across oh. her face. Oh my goodness. Uh, a great big tear in her tunic, uh, and she's holding a staff uh, that it, she did not have before. This is the same woman? or Same woman. A, I rush over oh to gosh. her and I ask yeah. if she's okay. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Can wow, we do anything what happened? For you? Can we help you? <sighs> uh, no, I just need uh, a good night's sleep, and I I shall be fine. I am just a little bit out of sorts. Uh, and she begins to peel off her clothing uh, as she walks towards the bed where Aerosmith is at. Uh, <laughs> about halfway there. She is naked uh, and looks like a topographical map of Colorado with the wrinkles. <laughs> uh, not at all inspiring. Uh, she crawls up and over Aerosmith <laughs> and covers herself in some furs uh, and does this. And all of the lights in this area, whoop, go out the fire is still lit uh keeping the room a nice comfortable 73 degrees uh camille zadar and daphne moments later the old woman is snoring in unison with aerosmith what would yes. you guys like to do i guess we rest till morning yeah i guess uh now would be a good time to take a long rest because we need it or at least i do Sure. So. You guys get in a very long, peaceful rest, although sleeping in the chair. Does anybody want to sleep uh, in the three-way position with uh, Aerosmith and the old lady? Now I'm stretched out in front of the fireplace. <laughs> Zanar and Daphne? I'll uh, sleep with them. Of course, she, of course she does. <laughs> Uh, when you guys wake up in the morning, the smell of bacon and eggs are very clear. Looking over to the bed, Daphne Aerosmith and Suki the Witch are in some kind of Jenga formation uh, as their bodies entwine. I don't uh, want to see that. <laughs> along, along with the uh, furs that adorn the bed. Uh, she wakes up. Uh, start naked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> and, as, and as Aaron was said, she's like 300 years old. <laughs> it is 
disturbing. Everybody roll a con. Oh, you come know, everybody, on. everybody roll a wisdom save. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> a, a wisdom check. I'm sorry. A wisdom check. Okay. Not a save, damn it. So it's different number. 18. <laughs> 14. Four. Daphne will never, <laughs> ever forget hey, the image that if, she is looking at. It was a wisdom save. It was 23, but my wisdom check was four. <laughs> so. uh, Camille, you apply mental bleach and you will erase that from your memory. Zadar, it will haunt you intermittently. Daphne, <laughs> You will never PTSD ever look at her again the same <laughs> way. It's just because as she got up, you were under her. So <laughs> that you is know, maybe I thoroughly enjoy it and that's okay. That not means... with a four. Not with a four. <laughs> you saw things that were not right. <laughs> it's not Anatomically, there were some issues. However, the condition, how is she? Is she healed? She is perfectly healed. Oh, well, good oh. for her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she grabs a hold of the staff that she found, uh, uses it to hop out of bed. Jasper has prepared a delicious meal of bacon and eggs and biscuits the size of your fist. Ooh, uh, is there, there honey? Are, there is ceramic <sighs> containers with honey and goat butter. Mm -hmm. uh, she hops out, does not get dressed. Oh, uh, come on. Wanders over and scooches up in a chair to the table. Come, come, enjoy, enjoy. The smell is quite appreciative. Okay. And the good news is because she's short, the table comes up covers a little bit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, so this is not a you can see like old lady cleavage. Uh-huh. But nothing uh that would give us an X. Well dude, I'm she, hungry, so I'm she looks like a profile pick. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, yeah it, it, there's no N C seventeen on this one, so you, you, <laughs> do, you don't see that. Except Daphne, who cannot get the haunting disturbing image out it's of burned her on her retinas <laughs> uh and daphne during the course of the meal she constantly engages you and asks you how did you sleep did the bed get too <laughs> hot were the bodies stacked against you too warm i know you devil creatures have a high heat tolerance but i want to make sure that you slept okay No nightmares while sleeping. Nope, just while you're awake. <laughs> Aerosmith gulps down food that's quite hungry, uh, because he is quite hungry, and remarks that he really likes it. Everybody roll a constitution check. Let's see if you like it or it doesn't meet your needs. It's not poison. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, for Zadar, 13. Uh, yeah, that's 13 the same. So, sorry, what is it? Con, con check, con check. All of us, yep. Mm -hmm. Ten. Uh, the, the meal's okay, it smells better than it tastes. Uh, but you can deduce that it's probably magical or uh, incantation of some kind. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but it, it satisfies your hunger. It's I mean, nourishing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's a Snickers bar without the great taste. Uh, after that, uh, she excuses herself, picks up her clothing that leads directly to the bed, and reassembles herself. Uh, she sits down and she's like, uh, we can go to my people, uh, which is the Edel clan. Um, and perhaps someone there will know. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Um, you want to know where we could pervase, uh, uh, would they be clothing available in your, um, in your village? Oh, yes. Yes. It's going to be awfully cold for you three. Well, yes. <laughs> It's going to be cold for you three, but not you, Camille, because you're wearing the uh, 
Winter Wolf cloak or hide. Because I am badass. Uh, but yes, you guys are not going to have an easy time of this. Uh, you might want to go over and take some of the pelt. Well, you can't do that because then they'll just disappear. I'm afraid it can't really help you. Okay. So okay. anything that is in here that leaves disappears and returns. Otherwise, I'd say take the uh, pelts off the bed. Right. Uh, but uh, let us go outside. I will drop the enchantment and we will head east. Can I say goodbye to your animals on the wall? Sure. I go do that. Pet their noses. Uh, who wants to d12 against me this time? Zadar will. Ten. Two. <laughs> uh, as you guys get outside, she holds her hands aloft while resting the new staff against her shoulders, says a magical incantation, and the teepee drops down into the size of one of our beloved D4s. Well, oh, that's wow. she, awesome. She then puts it into her pocket and she goes, very good, let's... Uh-oh. Hmm. Uh, she is looking beyond you guys. Um, is there, is there something to be concerned about? How concerned? <laughs> As you turn around, uh, a shriek is heard from Arrow Smith. His vehicle is missing. Oh, that is not good. Where's my ship? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and we just had it overhauled, too. Yeah. Oh. 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 We definitely need to find this. Uh, Zadar starts looking. Are there any tracks or anything like the, the craft was carted away? Uh, well, there's no drag marks, but there are footprints about this big okay so like okay All right. like giant size footprints giant size footprints giant size footprints uh in and around the area where aerosmith's ship was uh and is now not there as the wind picks up you realize that you have a very finite amount of time to try and track down your vehicle. Okay. Um, Aerosmith is in abysmal shape. As yes. Sad. I try to calm him down. Um, we will. We will find it because we need to. So. Uh, yeah, I guess we will start the search. South is where you will be going because that is where the tracks take you. Okay. Then we head due south. Uh, about an hour into your trip, the wind picks up and the tracks become exceptionally faint uh, to follow. Daphne and Zar, you are going to have to roll con saves or face the wrath of Mother Nature. Oh, I do? Uh, 21 for the first one. Yep. Oh my God, me? Yep. Mm -hmm. 12? Uh, no, not good enough. Your rolls at this time are going to be at minus one. All rolls, uh, yeah. uh, initiative, attack, save, all of that. Minus one, death saves, minus one. <laughs> Oh, oh no! My life. Can I like fix this? As you uh, continue well, to cast pain, right? You can always do that. As yeah, you right. as you continue on, uh, Suki and Aerosmith are bringing up the rear because clearly Aerosmith uh, has and no weapons or armor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is going to be less than useless. Suki might be helpful as she has that. Brand new staff. Uh, mm -hmm. None of you know what it does. Uh, no. <laughs> and it's questionable as to whether or not she knows what it does. Uh, but as you continue to trek down, you come to a point where the wind is so bad, there are no tracks. There are only drifts. 
And it is at this moment you hear as a Xena bugbear comes running out, followed by associates. Uh, It looks like there's about eight bugbears roaming around, converging on you in a circle. Everybody roll initiative. Remember, Daphne, minus one. Oh, that's really stupid. Let's just match roll. So 19. Nice. Uh, 22 for Zadar. Nice. Camille? Oh, sorry. What am I rolling? Initiative. Ah, shit. That's on the floor. That's a good one. <laughs> 15. Make sure the dog doesn't get it. Uh, everybody beats me because my first roll is a natural one. So yeah, uh, that means Z- you go away. You leave. That's right, Zidar. There's five <laughs> of you. Let's see who gets the lead. Out. <laughs> Arrow Smith is going to be attacked by the bugbear leader. Everybody else gets two regular bugbears. So Zidar, you're up first. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, question. Magic mm-hmm. Missile, does it have to hit one target or can it hit two? You can split them. Okay. I will do that. Uh, I cast Magic Missile. I split it. Uh, I put uh, two on the leader and one on the one that I have in front of me. Uh, let's see. <coughs> I need to roll. Okay, the two that hit the leader, a three and a five, is eight points of damage, force damage, and the one in front of me, three points of force damage. Fair enough. Uh, 19 is up next. Daphne. <laughs> um, it's attacking us. Mm-hmm. Is it all of my rolls minus one? All of them. Attack, I'm damage, blessed. initiative, saves. Okay, I'm gonna cast bless on us. Three, me, Camille, Zadar. Okay, fair enough. That it? Yes. My only Camille. Thing I can do. Camille, you're up. So at least that will offset your penalty. Where is everybody in relation to me? Uh, four corners, with uh, Suki and Aerosmith bringing up the rear. You guys are in a diamond formation. Am I in front? Uh, uh, you know what? We never rolled, so I will say D six. Five. Uh, no, Zadar is up front. Well, damn it. Odd even for Camille. Odd. Uh, Zadar's up front. Camille's on the left. Daphne's on the right. Uh, the other two are holding up the rear. Okay, so. And I've got two on me. Yep. So, I do Thunder Wave going forward away from us. Okay. You will hit those two only because bugbears are much larger than right. you give them credit for. Uh, remind me, do I do a save? Uh, uh, I think Constitution. I think you're right. These cards are too small, I can't read them. Well, that was useless then. Uh, Constitution save. An 11 and a 5. I'm guessing that's not going to happen. I'll be pushed back 10 feet and roll 2d8 for damage, please. Six. 
six damage to <coughs> each. Uh, everybody, perception check. Daphne, minus one on your perception check. Mine? Actually, you've got bless, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> 11. 17. Oh, it doesn't even matter. Five. Uh, Zadar, you're the only one that hears the word Maltismo. Uh, there is a flash of light behind each of you uh, and a small vibration, not at all like Camille's thunder wave, uh, but like a ripple of magic. Uh, you hear dogs barking. Camille, your two bugbears get up. Uh, let's see what they're going to do. Uh, one's on you, one is fleeing. Uh, so one will attack you. Uh, 15 plus, so that's going to hit. And they do. They're going to wallop you because you're a squishy one. 2d8 plus 2. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, three, seven, so 10 plus two, 12 hit points of damage as the morning star connects with you. Zadar, you hit one and passed on the other. So the one you hit, it's going to stick. Uh, so they both attack. Uh, 16 and an eight, add four, dirty, 20, and 12. Uh, a dirty 20 and a 12 to dirty 20 hits. Okay. Uh, the morning star swings. Ooh, nine plus two is 11. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Daphne, you have two. Uh, both misses unless a 14 gets you. Nah. Top of the order, Zadar, 22, go ahead. Okay, I am going to make the one in front of me erupt into flame, and he's going to have to do a deck save uh, or take 2d8 fire damage. Nice. Not 20 first of the night. Ooh, okay. Uh, let me see if he takes uh, any... Half damage. Half damage. Uh, deck save. Uh, a creature must also make a saving throw when it moves into the face. No, but there is a big pillar of flame between me and it. Fair enough. Uh, I will do it here. Uh, Daphne, you're up next with the 19. Okie dokie. Uh, gonna attack. Wow. All right, 19 hits. Yep. And... And I'm guessing a nine doesn't hit. Not even remotely. Do I take a minus one on my damage rolls? Ah, oh, so nine damage. You're Chile. Camille, you're up. Mm, I cast Firebolt. Nice. And... Seven. Uh -oh. <laughs> Off into the distance it goes. Such a uh, <laughs> Everybody, perception check again. Thirteen. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Let's see. I'm sorry. Perception check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Thirteen. Fourteen. Daphne, you hear laughter behind you. It sounds like uh, Suki and uh, Aerosmith are laughing about something. Uh, the bugbears, let's see. Uh, Camille, you still have one on you since you missed. It doesn't have to check morale. A five this time, so that will miss. Thank Zadar, God. you have a pillar of flame up against on one. Let's see what it does. Uh, nat 20, it will stay. So you have two on you. Okay. Perfectly good waste of a 
Nat 20, but I got a 16 and an 18, dirty 20 and 22. Bring in huh. the pain. Uh, only six plus two, eight, but two of them, 16 damage. Can Ouch. I? You can have one of them. Shield. <laughs> that's what I was going to throw. So, oh, yes, you can yeah, do that. As a reaction. Got, yeah, so that's fine. I ate okay. that. An eight. Okay. Uh, let's see. You only hit one, Daphne, so uh, it's going to stay two. A uh, 17 and an 11, does a 15 get you? Me? Yep. No. 15? 1-5? Yep. Yeah. 21 does, though, correct? 12 damage as it tries to knock out a tooth. Round three. I do hellish rebuke! There you go. <clears throat> How much damage? Uh, do I also take a minus one on this? Uh, you know what? I will not do that on this one. All right, 10 fire damage. That works. Uh, okay, Zadar, now it's your turn. Okay, I fire ice knife at one of them. <laughs> I, I take it they're tandem, right? Right next to each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. The one that I hit takes uh, uh, a D10, which is <laughs> rolled out to be a 2, but uh, it also takes 2 D6 frost damage, as well as its buddy. So, let's see. Alright. Uh, 11 points. Uh, cold damage. And then its buddy will take uh, 6 points. Cold damage. Got it. Uh, Daphne, you're up. Hell yeah. Why are these all so terrible? 14 hit. Nope. Can I roll? Do I roll D4 for each attack or just one attack? One attack. And then I think it's right. used up, isn't it? I can't remember if Bless so. stays. I'll look it up while you're rolling. I love D&D Spellbook. <laughs> this is, we all know, I don't know this shit. Yeah, um, when a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, you can roll a d4. Yep, so you get it. Uh, you're fine, because it lasts a minute. Right, but it's only on one attack, not both attacks. Correct. Yeah, all right, so then 13 doesn't hit either. Nope. Uh, Camille, you're up. Yep. Uh, I do magic missile on mine and have all three hit the same one. Okay, damage. Uh, do, 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 do. Where's my four? Five. Three. No. Six. No. Eleven. Thirteen. Ah, nicely done. Uh, everybody hears flame ripping through the air, and it is going towards four Davids on the left. Uh, just a line of fire, like it's a flamethrower, goes out. <laughs> Zadar instinctively kind of ducks. <laughs> uh, as does the bugbear, and it will save, uh, but it still takes half damage. Eh, that's not bad. Uh, ooh, that's better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, that leaves us with bugbears. Camille, you hit your bugbear again. Let's see what it does. 
fuck this noise, Camille's bugbear, please. Uh, Take that, asshole. Zadar, both of yours got hit this last time. One says, both say, fuck this noise, and they flee as well. Uh, Daphne, one of yours got, oh, none of yours got hit this time, did it? So there are just two on you. 16 and a one. Uh, So they will be weaponless. And you know what? I will rule that that one flees. The other one is a dirty 20. So it's going to deliver the pain. Four, eight, two, uh, 14 damage. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, <laughs> Bugbears of Frecklin <laughs> instead. Top of the order, Zadar, yours have turn tail and are running. Okay, the one that's fighting Daphne is its back facing towards me. Uh... Uh, you would be in front, she would be on the side, so it would be off your right side. Off my right side. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, attack. I'm going to inflame the scimitar mm-hmm. and uh, make a scimitar attack. Let's see. Uh, 14. Does 14 hit? Nope. 16 Ooh, to hit bugbears. These guys are armored. Okay. Daphne, you're up. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. Oh my god. You can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. You uh, should give six- up. <laughs> That's a 16 hit. It does, but did you subtract one? Yes, there was 17. I think. Damn it. <laughs> 16 does hit. And then. Finally. 15 hits. Nope, 16 is your magic number. All right. Oh my god, six damage, not subtracting the one. It's gonna mess me up in the future. I'm gonna keep subtracting one. Uh, Camille, you're up. There's only one bugbear left, and as you turn around, you notice the three bugbears that were all over. Uh, Suki and Aerosmith are bugbear cubs about a foot and a half tall. Oh, like how cute. Pandas. Uh, and they're roaming around wrestling each other. Um, Adorbs. <laughs> so I asked Suki, can you do that with that one? I don't think so. <laughs> I can try. Give it a is, shot. Is that your action? Yes. Mastifo! Nope. <laughs> uh, the bugbear that you hit decides. Fuck you and swings at you again. That De- or you know what? Uh, one or two on a six. It goes after Zadar. Okay. Two. It'll swing on Zadar because it got mad. Okay. Uh, only twelve plus four sixteen misses. Swing and a miss. Top of the orders that are. You have gotten its attention. Okay. With a nat 20, I slice and dice him. Damage, damage modifier. Should be the end of it. Okay. Uh, 15 points of slashing damage and 1d8 fire damage. Uh, let's see. Uh, six points fire damage more than enough uh, to turn the bugbear into sizzling. Uh, combat is over. There are three panda bears playing with each other, panda cubs, uh, oh, so cubs. <laughs> Their armor and weapons have dropped uh, and are in the snow. Uh, the smoldering body of the one you just finished, Zidar, is there. Uh, the other five have fled into the woods in different directions. You may give chase or do anything else. The problem you have is the giant footprints are MIA. And now that Aerosmith knows this, he is even more distraught than he was. It's just like, you didn't put any kind of 
tracking device. Be yeah, it's not, on it. it's not low jacked. It's not low jacked. <laughs> oh, you would think they would have did that at the at the place, you know? So mm -hmm. at what the about the pup bear babies? Uh, she does not know how long that spell is going to last. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, skedaddle out of here. Okay. Wait, we didn't kill the bugbear? Three of them got turned into baby bugbears. I killed the one that attacked you. Oh, you did kill the one? Oh, can I? This is going to get dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about skinning it. It's on fire. Oh. Um... I can't you even can get it. Skin to, like, the baby bugbears. Can I get it? I can't get it. Or use them as shields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I get like a bugbear foot or thing? Uh, give me an animal handling. Okay, let's see. Wow, she's collecting body parts again. She's the bone collector. I'm using this thing. Um, it's at a three if it's on here. <laughs> Nope, uh, you screwed it up because that's a two. Ah, could have been. No, that was taking my one away. It was four. Oh, okay. Still uh, screwed so, it up. Oh, so, yeah. it was real dice. It was eleven. Yeah, you are no surgeon, clearly. Uh, Suki says. Animate. What do you want to do? Looking rabbit's foot. Uh, I guess try to best ascertain where uh this. This giant uh, headed off to. Is there any high ground? Here? Mm -hmm. No, it's all forest. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I do a nature check to see if uh, any branches or anything have been uh, snapped or whatever at like a higher elevation? Nature check. Okay. Uh, okay. 23. Yeah, they've been snapped. Okay. Uh, does it appear to be heading in a particular direction? Southeast. Okay. Uh, I relay that to our group. I say, look, it looks like some branches and all are being shorn going this way. So. Uh, you guys follow it for another hour. You hear strange noises in the woods uh they get thicker therefore the trail is easier to find because mm -hmm. the snow has been knocked off the tops of these trees clearly the giant is must be carrying the damn ship uh, but it's pretty easy to find however everybody roll perception check i'm sorry what minus one yep yep <laughs> Uh, 13. 14 for Cesar. Yeah. 15. All three of you hear what sounds to be waves crashing. Waves crashing. Are oh. they right near the shore? Yeah. Can we see anything breaking through the trees, like body of water? Nope. Uh, Zadar, are you still leading? Uh, yes. Uh, you squeeze your way through some branches in the thickness where you have picked up some footprints. And as you step through, holy shit, you are on a cliff. Give me a acrobatics uh -oh. check, please. Oh, <laughs> see, check I'm holding on the edge. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, 21. Uh, you manage to grab a hold of one of the conifer trees before you get pitched into the cold white caps below. Whoa! Uh, I uh, hold my hands up to everybody. To... Uh, the others move forward a little bit more cautiously, and you guys all see the white caps from the ocean crashing against the rocky uh, cliff face uh, of the edge of this landscape. Out just a smidge is what appears to be a stone fortification, very crude tower looking thing that blends in in this small cove so a passing ship would not notice it. Uh, as you look down, you notice a series of rocks kind of make uh, what would be like a garden path 
Mm -hmm. but it's going to be kind of really tough hopscotching for you guys, especially Camille and Aerosmith and Suki. However, on the first step down is Aerosmith's ship. Oh, okay. Okay. first step down. Mm -hmm. It's like a stair step and then a garden pathway of rocks jutting out of the sea. So he just dropped it there? Huh? Apparently. Uh, is there a... Mm, okay. What condition does it look in? Does it look shattered or... appears to be in general, the same general condition. It has a lot of uh, pine trees branches sticking out of it, though. Oh, okay. Huh. The balloon itself looks like it's been poked into the basket. Or actually, didn't they change it over to a ship? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they, they've poked it in. Okay. Uh, so how far down is it off that first step? Watch the first step. It's a doozy. Uh, I thought someone else was talking. I was like, who just like joined this? Who's here? <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <We've been at. laughs> uh, 20 feet, you say, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, when you cast Featherfall, you don't have any control of how you drift, right? Correct. Oh, okay. But I mean, it's not working anyway. Now I think he wants to cast Featherfall on himself and drop down. The no, only problem yeah. is the, but the ship isn't working. Correct. Right. So but we should get to it, right? But if we get there, what are we gonna do? Party. <laughs> Party on the deck. Uh <laughs> I turn to the crowd. Well, what should we do? We we have the location of the ship. We see this fortress. Kind of. Fortman. A fortification, yeah. Fortification. Um, Does it how... look like a giant lives in the fortification? Is it giant it's, size? It's, it's pretty big. Okay. But from your angle, it looks like it goes down. So it's like a topless lighthouse. Oh. So, I mean, why would he leave, just leave it here? If, I mean, maybe he got tired of it, didn't want to carry it anymore. Might be a child got called to dinner. So, um, Aerosmith is adamant that he wants down there to check on his craft. Bye. <laughs> Throw him down there. I cast Featherfall on on both of us. I'm not gonna let it let him go alone. <laughs> so, <Okay>. all right. <laughs> so, Featherfall. On uh, let's see. I can pick up to five creatures so i can cast it on all of us to try to make our way down there sure okay is that what you want to do is that what i want to do <laughs> of course yes d12 okay mm. 10 9 oh the uh oh, nice the <laughs> The winds in this small cove uh, kind of are bat us quite around. tricky. You guys are batted around and you land just on the edge of this ship. Uh, Suki looks around and says, is it supposed to look like this? Uh, Aerosmith runs all over the place. He's checking the canvas of the balloon, looking around. Everybody else can give me just a straight up intelligence check. I have my still minus one. Yep. Uh, 19 for Zadar. Uh, 12. Check. Nine. Uh, Camille and Daphne, you don't seem to notice any damage. Zadar, uh, you're certain there's no damage to this. Uh, there is smudges on the side of the ship that weren't there before. Uh, kind of oil from a hand perhaps uh there's okay. also a dead wolf on deck for some reason okay uh, well that's uh, sad 
as Aerosmith looks around, Suki is over his shoulder and he is trying to explain what the problem was. Uh, they come to the conclusion that if she can use that flame spell, uh, perhaps it would be enough to ignite it's the, the Johnson balloon rod. again. It's the Johnson rod that needs fixed. Uh, she asks, do you want her to try that? Because if she is wrong, it will set the balloon on fire and be irreparable. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it, Suki. Daphne? Um, what am I supposed to cheer this person on? Yeah. One. Sure. I'll be like, yeah, what everyone else said. Uh, she asks everybody to, to move the balloon out a little bit more so uh -huh. that she can get a better aim on it. As she does so, uh, I assume you guys comply. Uh -huh. uh, you aren't going to be able to fully extend the balloon because it is a rather large balloon, uh, but you each take it and you move to the far end of the ship. Everybody roll perception at disadvantage because the waves crashing are very loud. Man, I'm rolling like shit tonight. Thirteen. Uh, ooh, Sadar did better. Twenty-three. <laughs> what am I rolling? Perception. Perception at disadvantage. I just don't believe perception exists anymore. Oh, oh shit! Disadvantage. Nineteen. Sorry. I'm rolling with some real dice. Never beat real dice. Nine. <laughs> what was uh, 19 minus one? So it'd be 18, then I got 10. I don't know. Nice. Uh, Zadar, you hear the murmurings of something, and you hear Daddy, Daddy, come look at this. <gasps> oh. uh, Zadar, as you look over, emerging from the old lighthouse slash tower slash fortress, slash domicile is a 12 foot blue kid like a giant smurf uh what'd you and, call me and, and, he, and he begins <laughs> to yell out daddy daddy they're strangers they're taking my toy oh no uh a moment later a large bearded Man, blue. <laughs> blue, about 25 feet tall, begins to emerge from the winding staircase. The adolescent is already jumping across the stones, headed for you guys. Oh, okay. You would need shields. Um, we'll try to, uh, I'm, I'm like, how fast can we get this thing? going. <laughs> and Camille says, I don't like children. You need to sit down. <laughs> do you want to yell to Suki to hurry up or what do you want to do? Yes. Help her? Can we help her? Uh, no, because you're stretching out the canvas. So Suki, much like you, oh. pulls perception at disadvantage. Wait, she has bless, doesn't she? Still, uh, is that still up? You three have bless. Oh, damn it. She didn't bless Suki. Okay. Uh, 19 and 17. Suki is like, what? Ah! Uh, Aerosmith uses a stick to kind of prop open the opening. And Suki's like, uh, the smell of burnt canvas. Oh, no. Oh is readily available but the container yeah. itself expands rapidly uh, with the heat and the flame uh let's see let's do d6 six daphne the part that you're holding uh seems to start to be burning through what would you like to do it's burning uh, Suki has said. Is there snow? A, no, Is you're on like... you're on a flat rock, jutting out into the cove. Spit on it. 
my god. You hear my pets? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Do I have anything cold? Wait, we're by the water? Can I just put water on it? I know you are above the water. Um, and you have a small frost giant child running towards you as fast as it can. Can I ask him? Can you just throw it in the snow this way? Yeah, you're stealing his toy. He's going to help you. Uh, it intensifies a little bit. Let's see how oh, much no. damage it does. I don't think there's anything I can do to stop it. Fair enough. Uh, the like balloon it? expands rapidly and begins to go skyward. As it does so, uh, you see Suki aiming her staff as best she can. Mm. Uh, Camille and Zadar, you notice kind of uh, burn marks forming on the canvas that you are holding as well. But the balloon does expand and it jerks the ship off this flat rock. Everybody roll dexterity saves. Oh Ooh. Nicely done. Roll what save? Sorry. Dexterity. Uh, 21. <laughs> 14. Seven. Now I don't roll. know why I thought real dice would help me. Now, now roll an acrobatics check, Daphne, or fall into the arms of the lovely child. Mm, so love me, it's fine. Holy shit. <laughs> Two. Very nice. D12 against me. So stressful. Why am I just falling apart all the time? Which from the twelve? Got to beat a four. Got an eight. Fair enough. Uh, as you are pitched overboard, much like Carol, uh, <laughs> your leg becomes wrapped in the rope and you dangle off. Unfortunately, you dangle low enough that Joe DiMaggio, the frost giant adolescent, is going to swing his axe at you. I'm going to die. If it is a 20, he's going to hit the rope, and you're going for a swim. It is not a 20, but it is a 15 plus 7. 22. How many hit points do you have left? Wait, sorry. What am I going to hit it with? 22? No, hit no, no. I, I, I'm hitting you. I have 20 hit points left. <laughs> am I, like, knocked out? You are unconscious with an 11 and a 9 plus 4. Uh, as the boat takes off, you guys initially go out over the water. The air current moves you back in. You do not see Daphne anywhere. And this is the end of Daphne. I'm going to uh, start doing a count of everybody on the, on the deck. Uh, strangely enough... Uh, Suki and Aerosmith got a 19 and an 18. They didn't flinch when that thing moved. They were pointed firmly. So you can see those two. She is still lighting it up. Uh, you can see Camille. You cannot see Daphne. Okay. Uh, Daphne, first death save. And remember, I'm just like minus one. And I'm just like I yell out to Camille. We're missing Daphne. He <laughs> can start start. No, we are. She's around here somewhere. I'm gonna go take a look over the side. Fourteen. Okay, so that's one save. Uh, Zadar, odd, even. Okay. So, am I rolling a d six? Any no. Oh, okay. Anyway, just odd even. Uh, even. You look over the side, the port side. Don't see her. Out there. Okay. Neil, gonna... What are you doing? Uh, I'm looking for her. Odd even. 
odd. He's here on the starboard side. She's she, over here. The rope is around her leg. She has this huge gash from the axe. Oh. Uh, you can hear the frost giant and his dad screaming and yelling. The ship is pitching wildly. And Daphne D12 against me. Let's see if you're going to get hit with a tree next. Five. Daphne. I'm getting hit by a tree? I don't know. D12. Ten? You do not get hit by a tree. Round two. Uh, Zanar, you have been told that she is over on the far side. You and Camille are standing there. You see the rope uh, that she is dangling from. Keeping in mind she is a tiefling. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's going to be heavy. What would you two like to do? I'm going to run over there and I say, Camille, try to grab a hold of the rope with me and read and carefully start pulling, trying to pull her back in. Camille and Zanar, strength checks. Oh boy. Daphne, your second death roll is in the wings. 11. Uh, Zadar, uh, uh, 10. <laughs> Close. Uh, you start to make headway and start to drag her up. Daphne, second roll. 11. Minus one. It is, it is minus one. It's 12. Oh. Minus one. Two passes. Uh, new round, Zadar and Camille. Strength checks. <laughs> Damn it. Nine. Twelve. Close. She's right at the edge. Daphne, death save number three. Oh, eight. One fail. Uh, <laughs> Camille and Zadar, another strength check. Okay. <gasps> Better. Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. You guys managed to flop her onto the deck. Daphne, death save. Done, done. This is so stressful. All right, cool, 14. So now I'm back. Uh, you are at zero. Uh, Zadar and Camille, you can readily tell that Daphne is not dead, although yeah. she's pretty banged up. Uh, the gash in her torso is nasty. Uh, mm -hmm. The young frost giant almost got his first kill. You have successfully rescued the... Did we ever name this ship? No, we never did. Okay. Well, it's his, so he'll have to name it. Uh, he is getting airborne, but you can tell that the staff is starting to lose power. Uh, okay. Who wants to roll intelligence check for Suki? Um, uh, Sidar will. Okay. Uh, for Suki, that would be... Uh, do I add my modifier or is there a modifier to put on to her? She has a modifier. What's okay. Roll? I rolled a 14. Okay. Uh, she screams, climb, climb, climb. Uh, and Aerosmith takes a steep approach as she... Uh, and then her flame begins to noticeably lessen. Is this like the uh, mummy? Yeah, I suppose it would be. Kind of, I mean, yeah. I, I didn't even think of that. Uh, the ascent seems to stabilize and then drift. Uh, <clears throat> you guys begin to float northward, although you can tell that there is a decaying 
uh, velocity as well as altitude. Uh, and it looks like you are going to come in on, uh, uh, what's the term? Come in on the skids. Okay. Uh, Zadar and Camille, what do you want to do with Daphne? She is at zero hit points. Uh, start binding her wounds and all that. Unfortunately, I have no healing spells. So, so um, Do we have healing potions at all? I think we do. So I get yeah, Zadar does. Definitely he does. He does. So yes, I will use it is a superior. I can't lay one. my hands on myself. No, you're you're <laughs> you're out. You're not so you're, you're unconscious. Uh two D eight plus four. No two ones. Two. Oh, okay. Two D eight plus four, no ones. Yeah, that was a frost giant kid that hit you. Imagine oh. if the old man would have whacked you. Oh god. Okay. So he should have beat his eight, kid's ass for stealing something. Eight plus four, twelve. Twelve points. You get twelve hit points back, Daphne. Nice. Who wants to d twelve against me? Uh, me. Zadar will. Eight. Five. Uh, from your altitude, after you get Daphne recovered, you can head over to where uh, air supply. <laughs> We're all out of love. Uh, We're that's so right. Aerosmith and Suki are at, uh, and Suki points out over onto the horizon where you see thin pillars of smoke. You notice these pillars of smoke are coming from what would best be described as an encampment. However, it is by a very wide river, aka the Missouri River. Oh. Okay. It is called the Swipe River, according to... I'm going to lay hands on myself now. Sure. Now you can touch yeah. yourself. <laughs> uh, who wants to roll d12 this time? I will. Go ahead. 12. Uh, you have just enough power to skid over the Swipe River. Uh, below you, you I... see barbarians, uh, mm -hmm. essentially. Uh, and they're... Uh, uh, as Suki is waving on the edge, uh, you can tell that they have bows ready. Some are hefting axes. One of them is moving to get a trebuchet ready <laughs> to go. Oh, gosh. So, who wants to roll persuasion for Suki? Uh, I'll let David do that. How about yeah. Daphne? She hasn't rolled yet. What am I yeah. rolling? Persuasion, persuasion for Suki. So, straight up d20, and I'll tell you the modifier. All right. I don't know why it just struck me. I have like the worst rolls. <laughs> it's four. We're not very persuasive. You're going to get the trebuchet attack. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, and it's gonna hit. Can oh, I man. try to persuade them as Daphne? Like, hold on, me. They've never met you. Uh, the trebuchet hits. Only in their dreams. <laughs> uh, but it is a glancing blow, shattering one side of the ship's rails. Uh, again, the altitude is disintegrating. Uh, the degradation of your velocity is clear, and... Let's see. Uh, shall we go high or low, David? High. High it is. High. high. Uh, so if it's high, you will not hit one of the buildings. Okay. If it is low, you may hit one of the buildings or a child. Oh, no. 59. Uh, you skim the top of one of the wigwams uh, and land in a clearing. Immediately, you are surrounded by angry barbarians. <laughs> what would you like to do? I'm with her. <laughs> Suki, do you speak their language? <laughs> this is the Edel clan. She is their shaman. Ah. <gasps> 
<sighs> Suki! <laughs> Uh, as she moves the canvas bag off of her, she holds aloft the staff, and everybody takes a knee. Thank God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Suki. <laughs> you all have coffee here? No. Mm. Uh, a gigantic warrior rises uh, he's got to be almost seven feet tall he's got goliath in him or something big mm. broad shoulders that's a smell of lilacs he does not he smells of uh, brown crotch. he smells of crotch uh, <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact all of the barbarians smell like crotch except for suki who smells like ancient spice because of course she's mm. a shaman Mm -hmm. uh, even the children smell of groin. Oh, come <laughs> on! Oric the stinky does not smell like everybody else. Ergo, he is stinky, stinky. even though he smells yeah. like lavender. Right. Uh, lavender, yeah, that's it. Lavender, lavender and lilacs, I think. Uh, but mm -hmm. they... Okay. The boss uh, is angry with Suki oh. about something. They are speaking in a guttural tongue. Uh, none of you can understand it. It I is can a only understand written language. That's it. <laughs> it is a heated exchange. And all of a sudden, Suki's staff begins to glow green. Oh. And, and the barbarian raises his hands and steps back. Uh, she turns to you and says, you are now under my protection. The Edel clan will not harm you. Do you, you wish to disembark? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, they have never seen... You're a gnome, right, Camille? Mm, halfling. Or a halfling. Half, they have never seen a halfling. They think you are a child. Uh, Zadar? I, I still look like a Telosi, and I still look like, um, Hepta. Hepta. Uh, they aren't real thrilled with you. Okay. Uh, Daphne, you're okay. Uh, there seems to be some kind of disagreement, uh, between three parties, one being Suki, uh, one being the main boss-looking dude, and one being a female barbarian. It has a penis necklace. Of, <laughs> nice. Uh, shout out to one of our other That's right. hobos. Uh, and she seems to be getting the better of the argument at this point okay. in time. Uh, uh, Suki then speaks in the common tongue and reminds the barbarians that you three do not speak barbarian i don't but if i have 10 minutes i can understand them uh doesn't matter uh the lead barbarian male uh points out in broken common uh you not harmed here thank you mm, i give him a thank thank you gesture namaste yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, the female leader focuses in on five, Daphne. Uh, she comes toe-to-toe -to -toe with you and crosses her arms. She's every bit as big as you and looks at you. You don't mm -hmm. smell like crotch. Do you smell like crotch, Daphne? Or are you wearing the... Uh, crotch bikini that's right th that you took from the pelosium <laughs> i think i always have it on me it's like in my pocket or something your crotch aroma is perceived by the female <laughs> as very pleasant with the 19. <laughs> Winning. Nice. so she is your new best friend amazing uh, i wish life was like this at this point in time, uh, the lady with the penis necklace likes Daphne. Uh, Zadar, the male, 
Uh, you're okay, Camille DeMello. Yeah. Me likey. <laughs> uh, his name is Matt Getz, so he likes. Oh, oh, he likes the ones. If there's still any Republicans that listen to us, <laughs> you guys are fucking morons. So gross. Uh, and let's see how they like Aerosmith. Not at all. A one. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. They do not like him at all, but thanks to Daphne's crotch aroma cologne, uh, you guys will be treated fairly well. Uh, they are going to show you to your own wigwam. It is rather Spartan, has all the basic necessities. Unlike the mansion, uh, this has a campfire in the center. Uh, it is large enough for the four of you, not Suki. She has her own place here. Uh, but you guys can uh, relax here at the edge of camp. There is no fence. Uh, there are barbarians walking picket routes uh, for protection. Uh, but you have reached the home of the Edel clan. Each of these wigwams are clearly portable, and these people are not quite nomads, but clearly these are not permanent structures by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, as it is evening, uh, a meal will be served of a meat that you are unfamiliar with. Everybody roll constitution checks to see how you like it. Aerosmith spits it out. Twelve. It's okay. Uh, Eighteen. It's good. What is this? Con check to, for taste. Am I still at a negative one or am I okay now? You are still at a negative one, but this is the end of the day and you will be warmed up. Eleven? Uh, it's okay. Okay. Uh, Suki will make arrangements for you guys to have cloaks. Uh, Camille, yours will be worked on by a seamstress to make it fit a little bit better rather than drag. Uh, Zadar and Daphne, you will each get heavy cloaks that you can wear. This will uh, prohibit your movement a little bit, and we will roll later to see if it affects your combat strikes uh, for your rolls. Other than that, uh, the young barbarian children, who are all like action figures, they're very beefy, uh, <laughs> but clearly they're adolescents. So, yeah. you know, every once in a while you get one with the, the faint mustache, but for the most part, they are normal. They are swarthy, they look like Greeks, uh, but they are barbarians. Uh, no blonde thundars here. These guys are all like Telosians, mm -hmm. only beefier. Uh, okay. Similar to what Oryk the Stinky looked like. Uh, only these guys really do stink. <laughs> you may spend the night to recuperate in the Edel clan, and we will pick up if they have any information via rolls uh, next time. So mm -hmm. let, let's call it, you know what? We've got a few minutes. Let's go ahead and do this. So who wants to roll to see if no. either penis lady or penis lady, her mate does have more information. Um, what am I rolling? D12. D12. I'll use a different die. Oh, wrong die. <laughs> I was like 50. 11. Uh, 8. Uh, they do not have information on this Oric the Stinky. They've never heard of him. Uh, they will suggest that you travel <laughs> north through the mountains. Uh, from there, you they suggest you continue north or you go east. Uh, they do not recommend going straight east because that will take you up against the clan of cannibals. Okay. So the Crador. The Crador. Okay. Uh, the Crador are the ones with painted bodies and eat their dead. They're right. Like, Green and Celts. yellow woad and yeah. all that. Yeah. So they're they're Celts. Uh, but the Edel clan, uh, these guys are hunters, gatherers, and fishermen. They live in the shadows of the Decor Mountains. Uh, okay. The the only enemies that they have are the Crador. 
Uh, they get along well with the other isolationist groups, uh, but they do not know of this auric individual. That being said, Daphne, what'd you think? I thought I was going to die, and I was, like, very, very, very upset. I was like, this is it. You were I'm close. Like, you were I thought I was going to fall into the water, and they're like, that's it. You actually don't get to, like, death save or anything, because... <laughs> you you would have frozen to death. So yeah. That, yeah. that would have been bad. Uh, David, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. Hey, you know, yeah, Aerosmith uh, has a buddy now, so, you know. Buddy... Yeah, uh, yeah. those two and Daphne can hang out naked in bed and roll around. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> until Dick Nicholas lady gets involved and then it's oh. <laughs> then, it, then it's like a really bad movie. Uh, Camille, yeah. what'd you think? It was good. I liked it. So uh, in the big scope of things, is this working for you guys? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we had Telosia. Now we're on to the Frozen Tundra of Reckland. I need to find yeah. Oric the Stinky. Yeah. Yeah. You probably do because he's probably the only one that can help you. I know, but I just I need to find him. The lust. The, the loins are wanting. Building. That's right. <laughs> Not like Daphne's crotch outfit. No. <laughs> well, thank goodness for her crotch outfit. That's true. That that did save yeah, that could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could have been, could have gone a lot worse. Now, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. The Cacophony Edition. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're ending or, early. We're, watching, we're ending a little bit early uh, just because what happens next is involved and that would put us Four minutes. Over. It's not Kyle's campaign. Uh, it's not Kyle's campaign. We do D&D mm -hmm. &D right here. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to shoot the shit about D&D. &D, join our Discord. If you want something cool like, a, I don't know, pillowcase or throw pillow or rug or... You know, wife. Pillowcase. It's going to be me. <laughs> uh, adolescents at home thinking they can get a throw pillow of Daphne. Not yet. Maybe we'll. We need to add the horns, though. <laughs> I, I don't think that's the selling feature there, dear. Uh, <laughs> most importantly, if you want to be on a one shot or the talk show, can't be on this Saturday. It is book solid. Uh, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. Hit us up. We will get you on either the talk show or the next one shot in two weeks. Uh, don't forget, if you want customized dice, uh, hit up <laughs> at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, tell them what you want. See what they can do for you. Uh, again, if your game stinks like Daphne's crotch bikini, uh, I, I don't think Adventure Sense has Daphne's crotch bikini yet. smell yet. 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 We, that's, that's what could be in the progress. We'll, we'll talk to Mike. We'll see, <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see what Mike can do. That's right. Uh, different kind of candle. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> oh, we should make them in the candles. Oh. I don't think so. Again, you're missing the selling feature. <laughs> My Christmas gift to everyone. Uh, Odd Fish Games. Uh, check out their adventure <laughs> since. Check out their shine system and coming soon to a Kickstarter near you. How to RPG with your cat. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Week, join us Saturday for a one shot. Four new hobos should be a hell of time uh there's some stupid ass jokes coming at you saturday night let's give them the big dating game wave and kiss and call tonight oh, um, bye everybody